And you said you just saw joy. That's, that's our future going down there. Uh, and it looked like they were happy. I want to read just a, a little bit of scripture here today before Brother Paul brings a message. In, in uh, Genesis chapter 12, I want to start with verse 1. It says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto the land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. This promise that we hear about often that was given to Abraham, it was for all nations, all kindred. It was for everybody. And since Jesus Christ came into this world and and suffered and died for the sins of the world. That opportunity is there for everybody. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 16, it says, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. His seed, the, all the nations, those that blessed him. He saith not unto seeds as of many, but as of one. And to thy seed, which is Jesus Christ. That's the seed. Jesus Christ is the seed of Abraham. That promise was given to Abraham and to Jesus Christ. Now here's how we fit in. Go over to uh, verse... Let's go to 26. It says, For ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. We're all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Everybody that's been baptized into Christ has put on Christ. There's neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither bond nor free, there's neither male nor female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. When we're baptized into Jesus Christ, we become part of Abraham's seed, and that's what this last verse here in this chapter says. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs According to the promise. We need to hear the word. We need to believe that Jesus is the Christ. We need to repent. We need to confess Jesus before man. And we need to be baptized into Jesus Christ. And we can become a part of that seed. And we need to continue faithful. This time, Brother Paul. <coughs> Turn to your song books from 77. That will be our closing song invitation. I want to thank you once again for being able to proclaim God's word to you this morning. You know, we we talk about problems, tribulations, and trials that we go through. Most of our songs this morning was joy about joy. And praise. And uh, so what I want to talk about this morning a little bit is, is joy in the Lord no matter what situation you're in. And uh, this past couple of weeks we went through a lot of <coughs> trials, tribulations, last, more than a last couple of weeks. And I'm sure everyone in here has went through trials and tribulations and troubles this past week that we keep to ourselves and I worked on this sermon for uh, a little while and I do it kind of do it at, at my work you know so I, I type it out on my computer but it just seemed like every time I go back to work on it more I, it, it just adds a little bit more to it and I end up having a half of a book written but uh, I, I try to break it down to uh, where it fits into my life, and hopefully that it'll overshadow into someone else's life. If you want to turn to your Bibles this morning in Philippians, first chapter. <clears throat> I'll do some other readings, but uh, yeah, I, I do, I try to bring some comments, but this is my comments, it's not what's in the Word of God, but 
it's, it's how I feel about things. And I'm sure that's how a lot of our brothers do, they, how they feel about things. But in <laughs> Philippians, first chapter, starting with verse 12, it says, But I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which have happened unto me have fallen or turned out rather into the furtherance of the gospel. Apostle Paul speaking here, how that we should live as a Christian. And to know that we are going to have troubles and trials in this life. We cannot get out of those things. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, says, Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Paul rejoiced in knowing that he was serving Christ. Matthew chapter 5, verse 12, Jesus talking, he says, Jesus said, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted the prophets which were before you. The Lord tells us to be happy when we're persecuted. We might not feel like we should be happy, but Christ tells us to be happy when we're persecuted. We can be joyful in all circumstances by being in the right mindset and having our priorities right. The right purpose in life, mostly leaning on the power of God. Who do we who do we lean to today when we're persecuted? Who do we go to when we're having troubles, trials, and temptations? As I, I said, most of our songs that we read today that we sang was about joy. Most people today don't enjoy life. Joe's brother that we just buried Monday passed away. Man enjoyed life to the fullest. He was always happy, smiling. Whoever he met, he was joyful with him. You know, we're not happy today. We don't have any joy. You know, we walk around with a frown on our face. We try to fix things on our own even to the point of taking our own life. I take my life, I can be rid of my problems, I think. It doesn't work that way. We take our problems to the wrong source. We think life must be perfect for them to be happy. They're always looking for something better. I can just change my situation. I could just get rid of all my problems. All would be well. Well, we're going to have problems in this life. Christ told us that we would. No, there's no such thing as a problem-free life. But who are we taking our problems to? God? Or are we taking them to man? We think that happiness is found in comfort, ease, and luxury. James did not say that. He said, count all, count all joy when you fall into an easy chair. No. That's how we think it. But what did James say? He said, count it all joy when you fall into divers' temptations. In James 1 and 2. Job chapter 14, 1 says, Man is born of a woman a few days in full trouble. We're born into trouble in this life. We're born into a troublesome world. There's heartaches in this world. There's troubles, there's strife. It's filled with sin. No matter how good a life you live, you cannot get through it without having some type of trouble. <coughs> and we need to learn to be happy, joyful, in whatever situation or problem that we face, having a worn heart and a smile on our face. Thankful that we're alive and that Christ lives within us. He wants us to let our light shine for Him. 
You know, we can have joy in spite of the problems that we face. We should be a joyful Christian, not moping around with a frown on our face. We have people who come in to churches and they sit down, they never speak a word. They never fellowship with their brothers and sisters sitting in the pews. What are you there for? You should be joyful. You should be thankful that God saved you from a life of sin. Amen. That your name <clears throat> is enrolled in the Lamb Book of Life. It's time that we let the world know who we're serving. We're serving a living Savior that's given us joy that's unspeakable. Let's take a look at Paul's life. <coughs> As we start that in verse 12. You know, Paul, he had joy in despite of all the things that he went through. He was locked up in prison for the last four years of Paul's life. He was miserable. He spent two years in prison in Caesarea. He was put on a ship to Rome to appear before Nero, known for his cruelty against Christianity. Now that he put all these people to death, Paul knew of Nero's how he, how he lived and how he treated Christians. Paul persecuted the church. He hauled men and women to prison. He stood before them when they were killed. He was shipwrecked. He was stranded on an island, bitten by a poisonous snake, went on to Rome and spent another two years in prison, waiting his trial in prison. He was chained to a guard for 24 hours a day, Every four hours, he got a new guard. How would you like to live that way? How would you like to be persecuted the way Paul was? Could you endure it? Could you put all things in God's hands? <clears throat> Paul said in Philippians 1.18, he says, I rejoice, and I will rejoice in all his situations that he went through in preaching for Christ. Everyone has problems. It's how we handle them and who we let us help us with our problems. Who are you letting help you with your problems today? Verse 12, Paul says, Whatever happens to him, was into advancing of the gospel. Even when things don't go our way, God is working on a problem. We can have joy knowing God is there and He has our back. When everyone else forsakes us, Christ is there to catch us. He's there to pick you up. When nobody else is there to help you with your problems. Christ said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll go with you all the way to the end of the world. You can go to the grave. That's as far as you can go. Jesus Christ said, I can go beyond that. Verse 13 says, So that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and all other places. Paul wanted everyone in the palace to know that he was in chains for Christ. And he had done no wrong, but yet he was in prison. For he wrote the New Testament, and he was able to influence many lives in the palace. Who are you influencing today? Even though you're in bonds in Christ, who are you influencing today? Other people look at us. Other people see how you walk. They see how you talk, your actions. The people in the palace knew who Paul was serving We can be an influence in someone else's life today also by showing that love, that joy that lives within us, that love that Jesus Christ puts in us, in our hearts when we give our life to Him. 
Verse 14 says, And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. There's that word bold again that we had a couple weeks ago in our message. These men were bold in preaching God's word. Paul's misfortune of being in prison turned out to be good for the brethren and the church. To be bold in speaking for God without fear. Caring not what would happen to them and that what we need and that we need today to be to turn our misfortunes into something good for others. Paul's mis misfortune being in prison and locked up in chains helped the brethren to spread the gospel. Further the word of God. Paul says in Romans 8, 28, it says, In all things God works for the good of all those that love him. These things happen to Paul for a reason. To, to further God's word in the gospel. God is working for us. Let us work. In our let God work in our lives. He has a purpose that we go through. Every problem that we go through today, whether it's to make us a stronger Christian, more loving, more humbler, more caring, praying. God has a promise. And we need to have the promise that we can serve God faithfully. <laughs> Endearing to the end. All the problems and troubles that we go through, there's a reason why we, he does that. He lets us go through those things. <coughs> to make us stronger Christian when we endure. Verse 15 says, For some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely, Supposedly to add affliction to my bonds, but the others of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. Paul says there are selfish people that are putting him in his ministry down <coughs> out of envy and strife, causing him trouble, trying to steal his joy. Let's don't let someone steal our joy today. And stand up for Jesus Christ. That's what Christ is doing. Even uh, Paul was doing, even though he was in bonds in prison, he was standing up for Christ. He still had joy in this life and in serving a risen Savior. Verse eighteen says, "What then, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therefore do rejoice." Yea, and will rejoice. Paul says, what does it matter whether it's from envy or from false motives? Something, some things are not worth losing sleep over. Paul says, what does it matter how they, what they're doing to you know, As long as the word of God is preached to the lost, that's what matters. Paul says a Christ is preached and he's going to rejoice in the truth. And so should we. We should rejoice in God's word, knowing that his word is being preached to the lost and dying world. Nineteen he says, For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. According to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. Paul says, I'm going to continue to rejoice in knowing the two things that give me strength and that keeps him going. The first is the prayers of the people. we have troubles and trials and temptations today, we know that our brothers and our sisters are praying for us. 
to lift us up. We should lift one another up. The second thing is that Paul says that the help of the Holy Spirit gives him strength. Those are the two things that Paul leaned on, was the prayer of the people and the Holy Spirit. And that he will not be ashamed of Christ, whether by living or dying. Christ is magnified. He says, whether I die or live, I'm going to rejoice and lift up God for the things that he's done in my life. And that's the way that we should live today. We have to have hope and courage in our challenges that we can't live without hope and faith. We need God's help. Paul leaned on God's help for everything that he did. In Philippians 4.13, Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mm -hmm. That's who we need to lean on today is, is Christ. When we're weak and we're down, we're beat down from the world, from the people that are around us, we need to put our trust and our strength in Jesus Christ that died on the cross and shed his life giving blood. Brother Dan read a little while ago. He shed his life giving blood for you, for me, for the sins of the world. He hung on a little rugged cross and bled for the sins of the world. Rose again on a third and twenty day. He's gone to prepare a place for those that love and serve him. That's who gives me strength. We need to look at things on God's viewpoint, not on our own, on the important things in life. Don't let Satan or people rob us of the joy we have. We need to learn to lean on God and his strength, and he'll take care of the problems for us. There's problems are many. Verse 21 says, <clears throat> For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Paul says, This is why I live. He lives to preach the gospel, his freedom. His freedom was taken away from him. His privacy, by being in chains in the palace guards, his fellowship with Christians, it was taken away from him. But they could not take away his joy in serving the Lord. Not even the joy of leaving this world. Paul says to die is gain and it's, and it's joy to be with the Lord. That's what we should, we should look at today. You know, we should live for Christ but knowing that when we die in Christ we should gain that heavenly beautiful home that he's going to prepare for those that love and serve us. Those that endear to the end, he said, the same shall be saved. Paul said, whatever state he had found himself in, he was content and he was happy. Whatever problems we have today, God is bigger than that problem. And we should have fellowship and joy knowing that we lean on Christ, Christ, he will direct our path. Verse 22 says, But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what? I shall choose, I want not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having the desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Paul had a desire to go on to live with, to be with Christ, but he also had a job to do here, and that was to preach the gospel to the Gentile people to the lost, dying world. He said, Nevertheless, to abide in this flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide in, con and continue with you all for your furtherance and joy and faith. That your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. He says it, it's for their sake that he stays 
It's for their progress and joy. His purpose in life, in living, was for Christ and the church. He knew that he had a job to do, was to preach the gospel to the lost and dying world. We need to be like Paul today in whatever state we're in to be content. Happy. That joy of faith. Investing in something that will never end. That's his church. Paul was investing into something that he knew that would never end. He was investing in eternity with Christ. Are you investing in something today that will outlive <coughs> you here on this earth? When you die, that you can be able to go home with Jesus Christ when he comes back to get to church. Paul was investing in an eternal life with Jesus Christ. We should be investing today in eternity with him. What is the secret of joy? Spell that word, J-O-Y. The J should be Jesus first. The O, others second. And the Y is yourself third. The reason so many people are unhappy is because it's me first, others second, and God last. And there's no such thing as a problem-free life. But when we learn to lean on Him, we can have joy. Remember, God is bigger than your problem. We need to say, as we get ready to stay in the same, for me to live is Christ. To die again. <coughs> if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior today, we give you the opportunity to accept Him. You've heard the word. You need to believe. You need to be repent. You need to confess. You need to be baptized in the watery grave. Be raised in the walk in the newness of life. And you need to endure to the end. Faithfully serving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Pray that you've got something out of this message today. you can have joy in your life knowing that Christ is there in your life. The problems and the troubles and trials and temptations that you go through every day, whether it's work, whether it's home, whatever, Christ is bigger than any problem. As we stand in